Nana loved sweets. <laughs> Every summer, I would spend a few weeks with Nana and Papa at their home in Longmeadow, Massachusetts. And at five o'clock was dinner time. And dinner was really never anything much. A hamburger, a bun, a steakum on a hot dog roll. <laughs> but after dinner was over, and it always ended quite quickly because there were no vegetables, <laughs> Papa called it rabbit food. Um, so we'd have our ham hamburger or hot dog, and then out would roll dessert. And there would be cakes and cookies and brownies that would come down off the fridge. There would be ice cream, and there would be Cool Whip that would come out of um, the, freezer. the freezer, and we would feast. <laughs> but that wasn't it, because there was always a second dessert, too. <laughs> so after dinner and dessert, we would go into the family room, and they would have two lazy boys. That was the only furniture in the family room. Two lazy boys and a big television. Um, and right before 60 Minutes, could have been any show, but that's the one that always sticks in my mind, Papa and I would go into the kitchen and we would make popcorn. And we would make popcorn in the big electric popcorn makers um, and we would cover it in butter and this cheddar cheese um, that come, came out of like a little gold canister. If you know Parmesan that comes out of a green canister, it was the same stuff. They don't make it anymore. And we would go back into the uh, family room and we would watch 60 Minutes and we would all have our own bowls. Um, and I would lie on the floor on my belly um, next to the dog in between them. Um, and we would carry on light banter, um, but that was an evening in um, Nana and Papa's household. Um, and one of my favorite things about that memory and that image is that a picture that was on my grandmother's wall my entire life, I've seen this photo, is of my dad on his belly <laughs> staring at the TV. And I just imagine that it must have been much of the same. He's about six years old, and that photo was on her wall in her room. Um, another thing to know about Nana is she and Papa loved their home. Um, all day long while I was with them in the summers, they would tend to their home. Uh, Papa would move the walking sprinkler around the backyard. Um, Nana would be doing the dishes. Um, and we would have to take care of all of the household business before we could go riding bikes um, or go out into the community. And they loved their home so much because they loved their family. Um, that backyard was where we would have big family gatherings with the Carpenter family in the summers and have all day barbecues. That home is where we would have the Modersock Thanksgiving the whole family would come. Um, and my father has already perfectly summarized the love affair between Nana and Papa in that poem. Um, and I very much knew that my grandmother loved me. Um, she wasn't particularly affectionate, but the most intimate moment we had was when I was about seven years old. Nana and Papa had thought it was a great idea for us to watch the movie The Shining together. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to bed terrified <laughs> in my father's childhood, childhood room, his bed, indeed, and of course I couldn't sleep. And I went and I woke up Nana, and she was like, go back to room, you're fine, go back to your bed. So I went back to my bed, and I came right back, I could not sleep, and so I dragged her into my room, and she got into the other twin bed in the room, and I was like, uh-uh, this is, no, you are getting in my twin bed with me. And she did, and, and we spooned. Um, yeah, my grandmother loved me, 
and my grandmother really loved my dad. I knew this because in the basement, there was a whole wall of Bobby memorabilia. <laughs> every football picture, every prom and homecoming king crown was on display in the basement. It was a whole wall of Bobby memorabilia. And I would play with it all the time. <laughs> but she left up that wall of memorabilia for the whole time that they lived in that Long Meadow house. She loved her son. And my dad really loved his mother. In her afternoon of life, after my grandfather passed, my dad was her main man. He visited her every Wednesday night and made the drive from Glastonbury, Connecticut up to Longmeadow, Massachusetts. They'd have dinner together every Wednesday night, sometimes eating pizza at the Italian deli. And sometimes she would try to cook at home for him. I think there were a lot of stuffed green peppers. <laughs> she tried to learn how to make salmon from my mom. <laughs> she failed. <laughs> my dad politely ate raw salmon <laughs> many, on many occasions. And my dad became such a fierce advocate for keeping my grandmother well and happy. Um, he, moved, he made sure that she was in the best assisted living facilities. He moved her up to the Cape. And as a financial planner, he became uh, profoundly interested in educating others about elder care. And he still does that to this day and has made that his next career. So I want to say thank you to my father. Nana was 94 years old, and we threw her a big, bad 94th birthday party. Thank you for keeping her with us for so long, because it was your love and attention that she thrived off.